Hello, shalom, Rastafari, and a melkam fasika lehulachu. And may happy have a happy Passover in our black Lord and Savior, Joshua, Yeshua, Ha Moshiach, to the glory of our Father, the King of Kings, Kedamawi, Haila Salase, Abu Kedus, Kedus, Abatachin, Kedus, Kedus, Kedus. We want to go over here is just to once again get a good order of the events, an order of the events. On the night of Passover, on the night of Fasica, on the night of Pesach, on the night of the crossing, the Passover supper, our Lord's, our Master's evening meal. According to the Schofield, um, the notes in St. Matthew's chapter 26, it gives us these order of events as they appear to have been these particular order of events, and there are 11, 11 order of events. So let's go over these 11 order of events. Firstly, we have the taking of Adonenu, the taking of our Lord of Gietachin, and the disciples of their places, their respective and prospective places at the table at the table. Now the table is very interesting. We have the table as an idea within scriptures. Um, in the tabernacle, we have the idea of a table. We have the mesop from Ethiopia. It was very interesting. There's a couple of um, pictures um, that we have from the Ethiopian Christians, and you see the mesop, which perfectly fits the, um, the bread or the injera the meso, and, and that's a circular, a kind of a circular type of table. Now, here in the particular um, picture that we have um, here, um, the artist escapes I and I right now. It could be Barzoni, um, perhaps. Also, there's the crucifixion picture of the, our black lord of Joshua. However, this is a traditional um, Michael, is it Da Vinci? I think Da Vinci did a, a photo like this where they speculate about the cup and, and the chalice and the position, of, um, the position of Mary. And here we see there's two particular um, Marys. Let's use the pointer right here. There is she, right, Mary, and this based on that Da Vinci, we call this the Black Da Vinci Code of the Passover, we can see that position of the cup, you understand? And so this is a Da Vinci-inspired, um, we could say, uh, Black Jesus or Black Lord, right? Now, here is another woman. Now, we can tell the difference between the males and the females in this um, Black Last Supper right here, or Black Lord's Supper, we can see that these are males, and this appears to be a female, and the short cropped here is interesting because the Beta Israel, or Ethiopian Hebrew woman, also have this short cropped here, and some say the long hair of the male is like the Andessa, or the lion, and then the female, or lionesses, tend to have this uh, short cropped here. So we see something similar to the Ethiopian Hebrew and the uh, black Israel, the Beta Israel tradition, even in this um, photo based on that famous Da Vinci. Right now over here, too, is a female. This appears to be a female as well. And even the similarity of garments is interesting. Now, some can propose that this picture actually represents what we have here in Matthew chapter 26, which will be the foundational in the four Gospels. We begin with Mateo's Wengel, or Matthew's Gospel. And the first portion of Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26, which leads up to the order of events on the night of the, the Passover or Fasica, Pesach, is the Jewish authority they consult to put Joshua, to put Joshua, Yeshua, to death, 
right? That's the first. That's the first part of it, where um, Christ is saying he's finished. He finished certain amount of sayings in the previous chapters, and um, he says to the disciples, "Ye know that after two days is the feast of Fasica, and the Son of Man, the Son of Adam, which some say is 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 Seth, or the Good Seth." You understand, Seth, Seth, symbolic of the Cherui, or the chosen, the elect, the Horus, the elect, he's betrayed to be crucified. Now it talks about how they assembled, you know, together the chief priests and the scribes, the elders of the people, to the palace of the high priest who was called Caiaphas in the beginning, in, in, in the beginning of this, and they had consulted how they might they might take Joshua by subtlety. So we have this word subtlety again, and once again, the, the, the similarities between the garden in the beginning and Gethsemane is very obvious right here. Verse 5 says, but they said not on the feast day, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among the people. And that's verse 5. Now, verses 6 to verse 13 of chapter 26 of Matthew speaks about how Joshua, Jesus, was anointed by one whom they call Mary of Bethany, or Mary of Bethania, Beit Ani, Beit Ani. Now, Beit Ani, there's a very interesting connection with a lot of this with ancient Egypt and the mysteries that really needs to be overstood in the proper context. But we'll get into some of that detail um, Later on in our lectures, Yah willing, Yah willing. Now it says, now when Jesus was in um, Bethany in the house of Simon or Simon the leper, there came to him a woman having an alabaster, alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head and as he sat at meal, as he sat at meal. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. Now, these words, or at least this idea, seems to have been an idea which um, uh, Askarotu, or Iscariot, which which Judas um, Iscariot had proposed in a very similar anointing that we have in the other um, gospel, in the other gospels. Now, some say this was the very same incident, and we can get into that particular detail. What we're, what we're trying to do right here is just point out this particular picture, this um, famous um, da Vinci inspired scene in this case of our our black lord uh, Adonais or Adonis his last supper or Yegeta Rat Yegeta Rat as we say Bamarinya in the royal Amharic of the king of kings and his Christ now as we go on we find that Yeshua understood he overstood it and he said to them and I propose that this particular scene, which often one say portrays the Last Supper, is really this particular supper at the at the house um, of Simon or Simon the leper when he was in Bethany or Bethany or Bethania when he was in Bethania, and so he understood it, and he said to them, "Why trouble ye the woman?" For she hath wrought a good work. She has done a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily, or amen, I say to you, to you all, Wheresoever this Wengel or this gospel, this true good news shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman hath done be told for a memorial of her. So there's a metasebia 
that our Gita, our Master, our Adonai, our Adoni commands us, wheresoever we preach this gospel, this good news, this Wengel, as we say, this uh, Bisrach or Misrach, you understand? What she did, you understand, what this woman has done, her deed or the, or the good karma, the good work that she has done, right, should be told for a metasebia, for a, a memorial to her. Now, what's interesting about this particular picture, as you can see, in this particular crop scene right here, we have the Master, we have Adonenu, we have Joshua, Jesus, Christos, and then we have the disciples here. Clearly, as we point out, this is a woman, and this is a woman as well. Now, in... in um, Western Orthodox Christianity, the whole role of woman has been so, um, by the false patriarchy, has been so uh, persecuted and suppressed. It's very interesting that Da Vinci um, must have understood these things himself and um, sought to address these things. Some say maybe he was Gnostic and the whole debate about the Gnostics. Well, there's certain knowledge Gnosis that we need to know, and our master even says so. We can say that he even commands so. Ye shall know the truth. We must seek to know the truth and seek to love the truth. But in order to have a true knowledge of the truth or even a true motivation, one must love the truth. So, in loving the truth, we're seeing that clearly there are women who are also in the scene. You understand? Of the Last Supper. So, we see. Perhaps the two Marys here. Some say this could have been Magdalena or Magdalawit, Mariam, Magdalawit, Mariam. And others say this could be the Mary Zebitania or of Bethany. You know, saying perhaps this was the woman, you know, saying that had anointed his 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 head, as it says, it says that she not anointed his head. Now, some say it's a different woman than the other woman, right? Because it doesn't mention the feet part. But now, the Schofield has a note, and they say no contradiction of John 12 and 3 is implied. The ordinary anointing of hospitality and honor was of the feet, Luke 7 and 38, and the head, Luke 7 and 46. But Mary of Bethany, or Mariam Zebitania, who alone of our Lord's disciples, so she was also one of his disciples, not of the twelve, but of the, the, the larger group, our Lord's disciples had comprehended his thrice, that means three times, repeated announcement of his coming death and resurrection of the moat and the tenshai, or the tensai, invested the anointing with the deeper meaning. So there's a deeper meaning to this anointing or this christening, in other words, of the preparation of his body for burying. So we have Mary of Bethany was not among the woman who went to the sepulcher or to the tomb with intent to embalm the body of Jesus, the body of Joshua. Now, this is an interesting point here, and hopefully we can get into that aspect as well, because women, and this is to I and I, um, sisters, daughters, mothers, wives, this is to I and I fellow, fellows who are female in Rastafari and among Ethiopian Hebrews, and, and more generally among, uh, you know, women in general, that there is this false idea of um, sexism in the Bible, but if you read the Bible according to the truth and look for the truth in the Bible, you will see that the reverse, the reverse of this from God and from the, the true Christ, our true black Lord's perspective, is, is the case. So a lot of sisters, a lot of women have been, in a sense, turned off from the scriptures because of the false gospel and the false pa patriarchy. You understand um, the false of whitewashing, which also brings in the falseness, the falsifying of it, because it's not, it's not the truth. You understand? So if they can't recognize the obvious, that our Lord is black, you understand? If they can't recognize the obvious, then the more hidden, 
you understand, or the, the, the more spiritual, they can't see the things on earth. They deny, if they deny Yeshua's humanity, how can they truly receive the teachings of divinity? All right, so we want to point out that this scene appears to be such a kind of a discussion right here. You understand, quite rightly, it could be this sort of discussion right here, as well as um, the order of the Passover. You understand, the order of the Passover, all right, in the upper room. So let's get into the order of events. Now, the word order in the Hebrew is often called Seder, and we've dealt with that word before, Seder. And, and the Passover Seder is like the Passover Supper, you understand, which... Um, Orthodox and religious Jews, once it, once a year, at least for Passover, for Pesach, you know, and though some say there are two particular um, times of the crossing, according to the celestial, the heavenly. One is at the time of the, the civil and the, the luni and the solar, the civil and the, the, the sacred year. The, the sacred or holy time is this time, is the the 14th, the Nisan, 14th, and going into the 15th, that's the holy time that is the Metasebia for the passing over that um, memorializes the children of Israel coming out of bondage of the Hebrews. You understand? God's son, Israel, the true Horus, the Horus of that new age where the Almighty, the Amen, chose Israel as his Cherui, or his chosen, and the God of the Hebrews made himself known. All right? Now, the connection with ancient Egypt is very, very clear when properly understood, when overstood from the proper perspective. You often know our Ethiopian Hebrew perspective. So the first, the first, um, event of the order or the Seder of the event is the taking by our Lord, by Adonenu and his disciples, the Talmudin, of their places at the table. Secondly, there was a contention, the Bible mentions, concerning who should be the greatest. So perhaps this particular scene that we have here also is that particular contention that is the second thing that happened. First, they took their places. You know, saying they took their places at the table. And then secondly, we have a contention about who should be the greatest. They argued among themselves about who would be, you know, who would be the greatest. Thirdly, we have the feet washing. The feet washing where Yeshua washed their feet to, some say, demonstrate the tehut, the, the tehitina or the tehut, the, the humility and the, the, the true order, you understand, the true order. Fourthly, we have the identification of Askarotu or Iscariot, Judas Iscariot, as the traitor, as the one who would um, sell Adoni, who would sell the black Christ or who would sell out. Christ, Yeshua, for the 30 pieces of um, silver. You know what I'm saying? The 30 pieces of silver. So he's identified the fourth thing that occurred in the order of events on the night of Fasica or Pesach was the identification of Judas as the traitor, Askarotu, and the withdrawal where he withdraws now from, from the other 12. You understand the withdrawal of Askrotawi. Now, the sixth event is the institution of the supper. The institution of the supper. Now, here's where we get our Lord's Seder, our black Lord's Seder. You understand the true Sarat, the true um, um, order of the, the sacrament here, of the bread and the wine, the Melchizedekian elements, Melchizedek elements of the bread and the wine. So the sixth matter, the sixth event, is the institution of the supper, or the arat, you understand, the seder. Now, the seventh matter is the words of Joshua, Iesus, while he was still in the room. So now Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 
to um, 29 is the testimony here in Matthew chapter 26. Now we compare that with Luke 22 verses 35 to 38. And then we compare that with John chapter 13 verses 31 to 35 as well as John's gospel chapter 14 verses 1 to verse 31. Now all of this is important if we are to keep the keep the fascica in spirit and in truth to study this. You understand? And if we have the family and ones and ones together to go over these areas, just read it. Just read and listen. You know, ones take turn in reading. You understand? In reading the particular chapters in the particular order. So we begin here at Matthew chapter 26, right? So now the eighth um, matter or event is the words of Yeshua, is the words of Jesus, the words of the Holy One, between the room and the garden. So there's, there is the, the scene between the room, and this clearly is, 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 is in a room, a particular room, you understand? Some say the upper room, and the garden and going out into the garden. So the words of Yeshua is, 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 is the next matter, and that takes place in um, um, Matthew chapter 26, verses 31 to 35, Luke chapter 14, verses 26 to 31, John chapter 15, John chapter 16 and John chapter 17. All right. Now, uh, Schofield says here that it seems probable that the high priestly prayer. Because remember, this is this is a, a changing of priesthood. This is what Hebrews chapter seven reminds us of. There's a change of priesthood from 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 Lewi to Yehuda. You understand? From so-called joining Lewi and Levi to Yehuda, to the praises of Yah, you understand, the praises of Jah. So, so there's a change of priesthood and there's a change or an upgrade, right, of, of the law from the law of the animal sacrifices now to the living, you understand, to the living sacrifice. So the high priestly prayer um, seems to have been uttered in the garden and we find the high priestly prayer in chapter 17. So John chapter 17 is the high priestly prayer that was uttered after they had reached the Gennet, after they had reached um, Gethsemane, Gethsemane or the Garden of Gethsemane. Now the ninth event in the order of events on the night of Fasica, the Fasica Supper is the agony is uh, the himem, your Christos himem, Jesus' himem, his agony in uh, Gethsemane, his agony in the garden. Now, after that, the tenth event is the betrayal and the arrest. And then the eleventh matter in the order of events, all taking place on the night of Fasica. All this takes place in this in this in this one night, why is this night different than every other night? Is is what in the old covenant, you know, saying um, the the Jewish or the the Hebrew boy would ask, and the elders or the father of the house would explain why is this night different than every other night? So as we too should learn this in order to teach our children, you know, for saying. Um, we have to know, well, why is this night different, special than any other night? Now, in the messianic perspective or the true Christian perspective, these are the reasons why, because of these 11 events. And the 11th event is Yeshua, Jesus, before Caiaphas. Now, Caiaphas is the high priest of the old order. This is what we have to understand of the Levitical order, Caiaphas. And now Yeshua, Jesus, is the high priest of the of the new order. And now Passover, celestially speaking, is a an equinoctial time, is is a crossover. 
there's a crossing over in the heavens as well. So as above, so below. So Yeshua here is before Caiaphas and Petros, Peter. Here's where we have Peter's denial. This is where Peter's um, denial comes into focus, right? All of this happening and all of this occurring. You'll send all of this occurring on this one particular, you understand, this one particular night. So when is Fasica? When is Pesach? And what the what does Yegeta Arat? You know, saying, you know, what does what does this really mean to us? Let's just go over this a little bit, and this is just to catch up on some of the basic, um, you know, the basic teaching of our Black Lord's evening meal. This evening meal. Now that we know the order of events, you understand. Why is this Amlakin uh, Yemiyasa Kabur Baal? Why is this an observance, right? A feast, a festival that honors, that honors the God and Father of our Black Lord and Savior Yeshua HaMoshiach, that honors Abba Kedus. Now, as anointed ones, Meshahawiyan, or followers of Yeshua, followers of the Moshiach, who call him Adoni, Adonai, who call him Gita, who call him our black lord. We as Christians are commanded and as elect Rastafari in the King of Kings, in Kedamawi Haile Selassie, to observe the memorial, this memorial metasebia of Christos' mot, of the death of Christ. Now, in this memorial, of course, is not just the death, but is the resurrection. This observance is also called the Lord's evening meal. It's also called Yegeta Erat, Yegeta Rat, the the Lord's, the Master's evening meal, according to First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse twenty. So, as far as the text, which text in particular should we study? And if we gather together for our family, which text we should teach our children, we should go over with them. Well, we began at Matthew chapter 26. You understand? And like we said, the Schofield footnotes is a very important and scripturally speaking accurate reference that gives you the order starting from the first Wengel or the first gospel and going to the fourth gospel concerning this particular event concerning this particular metasebia, this particular memorial. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, now now give us um, what we call the Gnostic or Hawaii of Aulos's, uh, Gnostic overstanding. Remember Christ says, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So now this goes into a little bit more um, um, summary what Paul gives here is a good um, summary that 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 fulfills the old the old Easter Fasica Passover and explains the new the new Passover or the renewed Passover in the Moshiach. So what is so significant about it, and when and how is it to be observed? Yehin Baal Liu Yimiyadurgo Mindino. How is it supposed to be observed? Now, Yeshua HaMoshiach, he instituted this observance when? It was on the night of what's known as the Hebrew or the Jewish Passover in and about, historically speaking, 33 CE, you understand, or 33 AD. Now, the Fasica or the Pesach, the crossover or the passing over was a celebration that was held just once a year under the old covenant. And that was on the 14th day of the Hebrew and later Jewish month of Nisan. Originally, it was in the Hebrew month of Abib or in the barley harvest month. Now, to calculate that day, um, the Hebrews evidently had to wait for the spring 
for the spring equinox. And the equinox is when there's an equal night and day, the time when there's an equal night and day. So now the Hebrews, they had to um, wait for that time and calculate that time by observing the heavens because the heavens is Jah's, is Jah's glory. The glory of Jah is revealed in the heavens, and the heavens is his is his clock for signs, seasons, days, and years. And this is a day when there are approximately 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of darkness. There are 12 hours of daylight, 12 hours of darkness. Now behind this, there's even a deeper spiritual or even metaphysical significance that has been um, preserved in some sense in, in the dark sayings. You understand? In the so-called dark sayings or, or the wisdom, the mystery schools, the mythologies, and the mishtir or the mystery so-called teaching or the wisdom school teachings. But in fulfillment, it all refers to our black Lord and Savior, Shua HaMoshia, in spirit and in truth. Now, this day, the day when the Fasika is observed and Gita Arat is the day when there are approximately 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of darkness. The first observable new moon that's nearest to the spring equinox is what marked the beginning of Nisan. And Nisan, make a note of it, Nisan was the second name of it. The first name of the month was Ab or Abib, Abib or the, the harvest month. Now, Fasika came 14 days later after sunset. So the beginning of the month was based on this 12 hours of daylight and, and darkness, uh, the new moon that was nearest the spring equinox. It marked the beginning of Nisan, the beginning of that Hebrew month, right? And then Fasika, the passing over, the crossing over, it came 14 days later after sunset and you know the 14 is half of the 28 and 28 is a lunar or the feminine cycle now fasica was was the 14th of nisan the 14th of abib or aviv but now we have yeshua here celebrating the fasica with his apostles we have the dismissal of of judas askarotawi or iscariot and then we have the institution of the Lord's evening meal, of Adonai's evening meal or the, the supper. This meal, it replaced, really, it more upgraded in spirit and in truth. This meal, it upgraded the so-called Jewish and the former Hebrew Passover, the Hebrew Fasica, and therefore it should be, in, in its real fulfillment in that sense, observed once in a year, only once in a year, although one can have communion, you understand, at other times in the year. Now, that's something we want to kind of touch on, but not everyone. There's also something we want to say right here. It's good for us to learn about this, but for everyone to just say, do the Fasica, you know, saying once you first get the knowledge of it and really be, as it says, convinced or persuaded in spirit and in truth that Yeshua HaMoshiach is Adonai, you understand, and exactly why he is Adonai and what did he accomplish, what did he fulfill. So the prerequisite is truly a faith-based um, perspective, you, you know, a, a faith um, imnet meseret a foundation, you know, um, being founded on the, the truth, the spirit and the truth. Now, when Paul talks about it in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, he kind of points that, you know, he points out that element. Now, the Gospel of Matthew reports that Yeshua, he took the bread, or some say he took a loaf, but he took the bread, and after saying a blessing, he broke it, and giving it to the disciples, he said, take, eat, this means my body. Also, he took a cup and having given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink out of it, all of you. For this means, this is my blood 
of the covenant, which is to be poured out in behalf of the many for the forgiveness of sins. Now, this basically is Matthew 26, verses 26 to 28. Now, there are some who uh, believe, or we'll say be like Eve, because not truly based on the Amen. So they be like Eve that Joshua, Jesus, turned the bread into his literal flesh and the wine into his literal blood. However, um, that's not true. You know what I'm saying? So there's some interpretations of this particular Lord's Supper that goes against his teaching that's not in his spirit and not in his truth. Yeshua did not literally turn you know, the bread into his flesh or, or the wine into his blood, his, his, his fleshy body. You know what I'm saying? His, his fleshy was still intact when he offered this bread, this injera. You know what I'm saying? Were Yeshua's disciples and apostles really eating his literal flesh and drinking his blood? Hayadaris, Ja forbid. No, for that would have been cannibalism and a violation of Jah's law. That would be a violation of his law. And you can see Genesis chapter 9, verse 3 and 4, um, Leviticus chapter 17, verse 10. Now, according to Luke, um, Caduce Luke, uh, uh, chapter 22, verse 20, Joshua said, this cup means, the meaning of this, this cup is, it, it is being, it means the new, the Adis or Hadis Kidan, by virtue by virtue of my blood, which is to be poured out in your behalf. Did that cup literally become the new covenant? The cup or the chalice is not the new covenant. That's impossible. That's not possible. You know, since a covenant is an agreement, it's a word agreement, a kal kidan. A kal kidan is a word agreement, and it's not a tangible object in that sense. It, it is symbolic. You understand? It is it is symbolic, but it's a word agreement. Keep that word in mind that it's a word agreement. It's like giving one's word and keeping one's word. In other words, being faithful and being true. Hence, both the bread and the wine are only symbols. The, the Shigawa Wadem or the Sagawa you know what I'm saying? The, the 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 body and 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 the the blood or the bread and the wine. The bread symbolizes Christos's Ha Moshiach's perfect body. Yeshua used the injera, some say a loaf of bread that was left over from the Passover meal. You know what I'm saying? From that Passover meal and that the loaf was made without any any leaven. It was made without any leaven, and it was wasn't made with any yeast. That's the key thing from Exodus chapter twelve, verse eight. That was not made with any puffing agent, any rising agent. So no leaven and no yeast. Now the Metzaf Kedus, the Holy Scriptures, the Bible, it uses leaven as a symbol. Le leaven is, is to be a symbol. Buhe, buho, and it's a symbol of chatiyat. It's a symbol of of sin, missing the mark. It's a symbol of corruption. The bread, therefore, represents the perfect body that Yeshua sacrifices, that Jesus sacrifices. Say the perfect life that was sacrificed. It was free of chatiyat. It was free of sin. It was free of trespass. Matthew chapter 16, verses 11 to 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 and 7, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 22, and 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Now, all these scriptures that we're given, especially for the disciples and, and those who really are studying, they're very important to note. You might not get a chance all at once to go through all the notes, but keep them according to their particular references because they're very important to document as well as to study so that one can grow in their faith and have and be strong of faith. Now, the red wine, right, the, the red wine or the wine edge, the wine edge, in, in other words, the edge of 
the wine of the grape, the red wine, it represents Yeshua's dem, you understand, or the Dema Yesus, the blood of Yesus, the blood of Yeshua. That blood makes valid, this is what makes valid the new covenant, the Adis, the Hadis Kidan. And Hebrews teach us that as well. Yeshua, he said that his blood was poured out for forgiveness of sins. And that'll be the next lecture, John Willard, on forgiveness. What is forgiveness? You understand? And what, what are sins? You understand? What is the Chatiyat? And how, in a sense, what is talked about as karma is also reflected in the scriptures to bring that metaphysical and that practical understanding um, more home to I and I so we can really see how it's very practical, something that we can, we, we can see the effects in our own lives. Humans can thus become clean in the true God's eyes and can enter into the Adis Kidan, the new covenant, with Yahweh with Jah Rastafari. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14, Hebrews chapter 10 verses 16 and 17. Now this al kidan, this word agreement, remember the word is very important and it's his word that we are witnessing as his word that we must testify to not a pastor, preacher, church, or denomination, but the word of the Savior. Because only the Savior that can save you, only the word of the Savior that we are to truly download. Now, this covenant, Al-Kidan, or one can look at it as likened to a contract, it makes it possible for 144,000 faithful, faithful witnesses, faithful brothers and sisters, true and faithful anointed ones, Christian, Meshahawiyan, true elect Rastafari, over saying to go to Mount Zion, you understand, to bear witness in that Mount Zion. There they will serve as kings and priests, or more correctly, as a kingdom of the priesthood for the barakat, for the blessing and the upbuilding of all humanity, of all humanity. So, so this is what I and I are working to be worthy worthy of serving in that new age kingdom of the king of kings and his christ as a as a as a um a kingdom of the priests the true malkat sedek priesthood and it begins with study studying and showing i and ourselves approved now the verses that prove this the documentation is genesis 22 and 18 and jeremiah chapter 31 verse 31 to 33 First Peter chapter two verse nine, Revelations chapter five verse nine and verse ten, and Revelations chapter fourteen verses one to three. Now I think this part right here, which is gonna we're gonna wrap this up right here, brothers and sisters, and once again, happy Fasica, happy Passover twenty twelve. We truly think that this is a very important crossing over time that we're going through and may the memorial metasebia memorial something that we think about that we meditate on even more important than the, the physical just bread and wine though we pointed out the symbolic elements in other videos in the previous videos speaking about the kedem the kedem um grape juice and the manishevit so forth and so on and the matzahs the mozi so forth and so on but we have to understand that this is a metasebia this is a memorial so who should take and who should partake of these memorial ele emblems or elements, actually? Now, logically, or according to the word, the logos, only those, only those, only those in the Hadith Kidan, only those who, according to their own conscience, you know, within their own, you know, it's reflection of spirit and truth, are in the new covenant. That is, those those who have that true expectation. You understand? Know in other words, one has to have the faith. You understand? Know and also, the deed is a part of it. What you do. So one can say, "I have faith," but they have to be working in it out. Have to be living Yeshua. 
those who truly are seeking to live Yeshua, you understand, um, and have that hope of of entering into Zion, of entering into the true kingdom of the priesthood, should partake of that Melchizedek, Melchizedek sacrament, which is the bread and the wine, which the bread and the wine are symbols of. And that's very, very important. You understand? That's very, very important. You understand that there is, this is why Paul would say later on that one should examine themselves. One should really check themselves and examine themselves, and they should be able to discern the body. You understand the body of Yeshua. It's not talking about the physical, fleshy body, but it's talking about the spiritual, the spiritual body. Jah's Holy Spirit must convince each one, each one who seeks to partake, that they have received that seal. You know, in other words, they have been elected, in, in other words, into that true heavenly kingdom. And there are, you know, there's marks of the true Christian. Romans chapter 8, um, verse 16, we think is a, a good reference for now on that particular point, although we hope to go into a little more detail. Even with the Passover, not everyone could eat of that particular Passover, you understand, but those, you understand, who, those who are worthy, there's a certain worthiness. That's what Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Check that out. And, and he says that, you know, one is, well, if one eats unworthily, they are guilty of the body and the blood. So that's very serious there. So don't rush into it. First, begin by studying. You understand? Remember, it's a metasevia. It's a memorial. You understand? So it's something that we remember, like the Shabbat. It's not about the so-called rites and rituals, but it's about the memorial. Firstly, be born again from above. Be born again in one's mind. You understand? They are also in the kingdom covenant being in that kingdom covenant as Rastafari, every true and faithful Rastafari must recognize they are in a kingdom covenant, you, you understand, with the King of Kings, but in and through Yeshua, in and through Jesus Christos, in and through Joshua HaMoshiach. Luke chapter 22, verse 29 is, is a word on that. And the King of Kings, Kedemawi Haile Selassie, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, bears such witness, and we will refer to the Mechdim, or the preface to book one of His Majesty's autobiography. May they take note of the word which you have spoken. Without me, ye can do nothing. So that may we, that, that generation who would rise up, who would be a part of those who would follow the Son of Man in the resurrection, make make and take note of that word which Joshua, you know, then has spoken. Haile Selassie so testified, the Father, our Father, Kedus Avatach, and has so testified to that. So Yeshua, Jesus, our black Lord and Savior, and his teaching, his word, is that prerequisite. For my part, for I and I part, we glory in the Bible. Now, what about those, some would ask, who have the hope of, uh, of, of living forever in that future paradise on earth. You understand when the earth is, is fully restored to its true purpose. They obey Yeshua's command. That's the key. They obey Yeshua as Adoni, as Adonai, as Gita, as Kurios, as Senor, as Lord. They obey him as Lord. Not just call him Lord, Lord, but obey him. That's the key. The Shema Yisrael. And they attend they attend the master's evening meal, or they be in attendance if possible. You understand where the masters or the Lord's evening meal, the Lord's supper, where the fasica of Adonai, Yeshua HaMoshiach, is observed. But they come as, in other words, those who are as respectful or honorific observers. You understand, not as partakers. Not all are partakers. You understand, so we have to we have to be a witness to that. But it, once a year, this is observed once a year after sundown on Nisan the fourteenth. And this particular year, I think it's April sixth. It's on a Shabbat a Shabbat Eve, 
which is very interesting. Now, we, as a line of Jewish society of His Imperial Majesty, as Aras Tefari and I, Aras Yadinos Tefari, Wendam Yadin, seek to observe the Lord's evening meal, Adonai's evening meal, first of all, as a metasebia, first of all, to learn about it learn more about it. And if it's, if it's being conducted in spirit and in truth anywhere, we would go, not as partakers, but to observe, and then go check it out, check out the scripture, check out the spirit and the truth of it, so we can know the truth. Now, although only a few thousand, according to the scriptures, globally, worldwide, profess to have such a African Zion, you know, some sort of a hope, an expectation, of the kingdom of the king of kings and his Christ. This observance, the Lord's Supper, is precious and should be precious to all, especially all who call themselves Christian or Christian. It is an occasion when all of us must reflect the metasebia, think about, remember, he says, do this in what remembrance of me upon the superlative love of John the Father and his son Jesus Christ, Jesus Christos. John chapter 3, verse 16, as a reference. So, once again, brothers and sisters, this has just been a kind of a straight on teaching as we hear, as we hear, um, go through the order of events and, and the meaning of our Black Lord's evening meal to us. And we hope that this. Um, will impart to those who seek to learn more, much more about this, as well as to study and to and to seek it out for themselves, to find the truth of this for themselves. So once again, Shalom, Aras Tafari, since this is a high and holy Shabbat, as well as Fasika 2012, and happy Passover, Pesach, Fasika to all of you, my brothers and sisters. One love, Jah love be to you all. Shalom. Rastafari.